And he doesn't think that Allah is ar razaq With this plan, he escapes from the trap of the shaitan. He makes you fear, he promises you poverty, and he makes you fear poverty. And Allah sucks out all of the barakah in his wealth. It's of different kinds of non-alcoholic cocktails, Allah, if he wants to, can shower him with wealth from the heavens and the earth. You can't give up the alcohol that you sell in your restaurant because you won't earn any money. Or oh Allah, I'm doing this because you told me to obey my husband. If somebody came to you and told you that you were going to die tonight, you need to go and get yourself this job, even if the job isn't halal. What about specific plots of the shaitan? Things that the shaitan is mentioned about the shaitan in the Quran that he will do very specifically. Let's just look at what the Quran says. The Quran talks about the shaitan promising you poverty, making you fear poverty, and commanding you to do immorality. The shaitan makes you fear poverty. So the shaitan is all about connecting you to this world. One of the traps of the shaitan is connecting you to this world too much and making you fear that, that you're not going to be successful in this world and making you fear that you're not going to achieve anything in this world that you need to go and get yourself this education even if that education compromises your deen in Islam you need to go and get yourself this job even if the job isn't halal you need to go and do this action even though the action is going to lead you to the anger of Allah Azza wa the shaitan is going to try to get you too connected to this dunya and you have to remember that when we talk about Muslims abstaining from the dunya and keeping away from the dunya, the meaning of this abstaining from the dunya and keeping away from the dunya is not that you don't have any wealth and you live in poverty. Islam doesn't ask us to live in poverty. And Islam doesn't ask us to you know, completely you know, lock ourselves up in monasteries like the Christian monks did. But Islam asks you not to have your heart attached to the wealth that you have. Not to have your heart attached to this dunya. So if it comes, it comes. If it goes, it goes. But it's not your primary aim. It's not what you care about. It's not what you spend all of your day and night doing. Take yourself and keep yourself a little diary. Just what you did during the day. SubhanAllah, most of us will spend a third to a half of our time asleep. And a quarter of our time, whatever doing, whatever it may be, working or seeking something from the dunya. And then maybe an eighth of that time will be eating and drinking. And you're left with the tiniest amount of your time which is actually spent towards the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the shaitan focuses you completely upon the dunya. If somebody came to you and told you that you were going to die tonight... You wouldn't care about your job, you wouldn't care about this world, you wouldn't care about what you've earned or what you haven't earned. You would only care about the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, like the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's a time for this and there's a time for that. We're not asking you not to go to work, we're not asking you to cut yourself off from the dunya, we're not asking you not to have a good time, but make sure that a big portion of your time is dedicated towards what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you for. And of course, in this, we've mentioned before the concept of ihtisab, of getting a good deed out of your dunya-based actions. How do you get a good deed out of the actions you do which are purely for the dunya? By remembering that your intention in it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you go to work and you say, oh Allah, I'm going to work, but my intention for going to work is so that I can earn money and give zakah, so that I can earn money and feed my family, so that I don't have to take haram loans, so that I don't have to betray the principles of my religion. And that intention that you have when you go to work, you are rewarded for. You know, let's say, for example, there is somebody there cleaning the house. Even when they're cleaning the house, they're saying that, for example, there's a lady, she's cleaning the house, she's saying, oh Allah, I'm doing this. Because you told me to obey my husband and you told me to take care of my husband's house. So this is part of me fulfilling the duties that you gave. And inshallah, she's rewarded for that work that she does in the house, even if it is something that is purely from the dunya. So the shaitan, one of the aims, the shaitan, uh, he, he makes you fear, he promises you poverty and he makes you fear poverty. He makes you fear that, you know, don't do this. You know, you can't possibly earn a halal living. You can't give up the alcohol that you sell in your newsagent. You can't give up the alcohol that you sell in your restaurant because you won't earn any money. This is the shaitan and one of the traps of the shaitan that he is promising you poverty. If you think about this argument, this picture that we're drawing, you have a brother, he has a restaurant and he knows he's selling most of his money he's earning from alcohol. 
So the shaitan, he comes and he tells him, you're never going to be rich unless you sell this alcohol. And he doesn't think that Allah is ar-razaq. Allah, if he wants to, can shower him with wealth from the heavens and the earth. More than that, he doesn't think that he's going to be asked about that wealth on the day of judgment. He doesn't think that Allah sucks out all of the barakah in his wealth because of the alcohol that he sells. And so on and so forth. So the shaitan, he dresses things up. It's just a call. He doesn't force the man to sell alcohol, but he just convinces him that if he doesn't sell alcohol in his shop, he's never, ever, ever going to make any money. What do we say to the brother? We say to him that realize that the provision is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that if Allah blesses you in your wealth, even a tiny bit would be enough for you. Don't, don't say that Allah can't give me wealth. Don't say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't bless me enough that I can have barakah in my wealth from the halal. And so the brother needs to make a plan to remove alcohol from the restaurant, to look to you know, uh, replace it with something different. So he might, for example, uh, decide to start selling lots of different kinds of non-alcoholic cocktails, lots of different kinds of juices, lots of different kinds of drinks to make up for the fact that he doesn't sell alcohol. Maybe he starts advertising alcohol-free restaurant, family-friendly, and he starts to make a plan. And with this plan, he escapes from the trap of the shaitan, trusting in Ar-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you like our content, then please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for latest updates. Thank you.